Motivational, a small night's podcast hosted by Lord Hood, Lazarus Clay, and Zagreus. Episode 72, recorded on March 23rd, 2014. This is Lord Hood. This is Lazarus Clay, and welcome to the Arsenal, a podcast where we talk about Sparrow Nights. I was just thinking, there's too much 20 in the date right now. Can we stop with that, please? Hi! How's it going? Good. Is Zang coming? He's not coming. He, uh... You know, we were up a little late, uh, depending on where in the world you are. Kind of a lot late. We kept uh, the people in Great Britain up until like 2 or 3 <laughs> in the morning, um, which was a bit unfortunate. You still but... have followers at 2 or 3 in the morning? Pardon? You still have people following it, like watching it at 2 or 3 in the morning? No, no, they were playing. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we recorded Shopping List Season you, 2 you last week. live streaming? No, no, just recording it straight up. Um, but I will talk about it a little bit more specifically in Mission Report, but... Yeah, so I was up a little later than I normally would be for a Saturday night, but it is Saturday, so yeah, I need a nap. is is the end of the day, so this might be a little bit of a more jumpy show, but hey, it's more fun when people are tired, right? Yeah, we're drunk. <laughs> it's a good show. It's always a good time. That's a song, isn't it? Never mind. <laughs> All right. Well, in the lockbox today. Yeah. So, oh, I never asked the question. No, Zhang was playing. Right, and he told me yeah. last night that he was um, going to be. He's sounds like he's at home right now. And he's got to get back to the college campus today, uh, so he will be doing that. So I mean, he's online on Skype right now, which means he's either already gone or about to go. But in any case, I messaged him and I said, "Hey, you want to show up?" Well, I opened the lockbox last week. I'm pretty sure. So now it's your turn. Okay, drum roll, please. <laughs> How to handle a sword. A concise guide by unknown. Oh, oh concise. What is concise, that? Concise, yes. 7,000 pages? No, it's uh, 6,531. Wow. Fat stack. All right, yes. well, set that down on the floor. I, I think that's... <clears throat> the stack I suppose of, it's concise compared to some things. Yeah, that stack of papers is taller than me. But we'll be... Forging through how to handle a how to handle a sword as concise guide. Apparently, that's actually hard to say. How to handle a sword, a concise guide. Hmm. Nah, I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just me. It's you. It probably is. And then we also have just some cool art and videos and things that we want to make sure that you take a look at because they're important and crucial. And I'm gonna stall until I can get my bumpers loaded up. But hey. So, stick around, got some fun stuff coming at you in just a bit. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, let's try this again. Okay. So, so basically... No, actually, the excavators told the truth. It was me who lied. This is your port. All right, Mission Report is just where we talk about our gaming experiences since the last podcast, so... As is most often the case. Hood, how was your week? Um, well, you see what happened was I played some Hearthstone and some Minecraft, and that's about it. And I guess I got on a couple times, like, to chat with guildies, but... Yeah, I would still never understand that, to be honest. I I used to be able to do that, but I'm not one of those persons who can just sit around and talk anymore. In Spiral Nights, I'm like, I don't know. It used to work for me, but... Uh, okay. What rank are you in Hearthstone right now? What's your ladder rank? Or are you not playing ladder? I'm not playing ladder. Oh, never mind. But I think it's like 20 or 22 or right. something. Okay. Yeah, my highlight of the week would have been uh, recording Spiral Knight's Shopping List Season 2. Because that was what happened last night. And we had a bunch of people um, playing the three original. Uh, the, it'll, there's going to be three different perspectives again. Uh, as is the rule, no one's allowed to give out spoilers, so, uh, we're not giving out spoilers. But it was a lot of fun. Is he referring to... (laughs) Yeah. Uh, wish we could have got Hood in on that, but his internet situation is, as always, a little bit eh. But, you know, eh. 
Yeah. I'm trying to think. Is there anything notable that happened? Uh, we had nine players and one awesome Sky Scythe moderator. Uh, there was myself, Zangrius. Ben- Dungeon Master. Yeah. Core Dungeon Master. Master. Um, Core Master. Yep. Uh, Core Master. There you go. Clockworks Master. Core Hound. <laughs> that too. It was myself and Zangrius and Glaces, and then there was Maroka, Sir Greenlink, and Cognitive, and then there was Solatron and... Uh, Madam Tigger and the last knight whose name's escaping me, but I have it right here. If I can see it, Roderick, Roderick, and yeah, it was a ton of fun. Um, so we changed the format up a little bit. If you've been paying attention to us, you know that we changed to a point system instead of a just grind for materials until Kingdom Come because that's no fun. It's a here's a bunch of things you can do and you get points for doing them. And so first person to 100 points wins. And you lose points if you use health pills. So the use of health pills is extremely discouraging. I thought I said cognitive. Did I not say cognitive? Morocco, Sir Green, Lincoln, cognitive. My apologies if I did not, if I misspoke. Yen. Yeah. It's a sleepy podcast. <laughs> so if if I, if I there is things that are stated incorrectly, please uh, let us know. We'll rectify them. Let me know because I'm going to be the one who's having to rectify. Hood's going to be like, that's not right. I'll be like, Cottery Sword is best sword 2014. And you're going to be like... Uh, that's probably not right, but yeah, pottery sword, best sword for some things. Not really, never said no one ever. Best sword for trolling. I'm trolling with my pottery sword. All right. Well, speaking of which and other ways to handle swords, let's get into our discussion this week. Over her at Warcraft, man. Find the helmet of someone who likes some creature that brawls and horns to fight with, or something like that. The helmet is supposed to be resembling to a demon called Elder. 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 Uh, I'll look it up. I'll quote it um, directly. Facebook.com slash Spiral Knights. Um, to answer their question, I said Swarm Infested Evil The Arsenal Podcast Episode 50 Lord Hood as my secret weapon. And as far as I'm aware, we are the only per- I My post got liked by Spiral Knights, and no one else has been liked by Spiral Knights. I'm not saying that as a bragging right. I'm just saying that as a hey, cool recognition kind of thing um and in the meantime we got like five likes on the page since then hmm. so on the arsenal podcast page um then again someone here has my secret weapon in Star nights is the cautery sword and that has a bunch of likes too so and the ignore player button and the support of my friends and allies aww <laughs> so that was that's that's as far as news went this week hmm. third or wings yeah. secret weapon is damage bonus max my uh, Gremlin Spy has reported to me a couple of things, but I can't talk about them on the show because they'd be violating the spoilers. Would they be like Bad Milk? Spoiler? Spoiler. Spoiling? Spoilers. Would it be like the front of a car? Spoiler? <laughs> would it be like... Oh, would it be like a hot sun on a jug of milk? <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> there you go. Okay. That's so bad. We have a little mini discussion. A couple of little mini discussions. One of them was just um, Green Link suggested early last week as a, hey, um, you guys should talk about this if you still need something. And because there's no news, yeah, we're still needing stuff. If you want to send us something to talk about, uh, we're happy to consider it. So go ahead and contact us. You can find out all the ways to do that at the end of the show or on our website, which is scalelite.com slash arsenal. So Green Link says, what are the smartest and stupidest things we've ever done in the game? This is getting really personal. <laughs> yeah. So you have something in mind. I don't have things explicitly in mind, so why don't you go? Okay, so we were doing pictures for... I think it was a guild thing. Um, I was in Nightmare. And I forgot... I unequipped my shield. And my weapons. And then I forgot about it. And then a friend, like an hour later, a friend asked me to join him. I was like, oh, sure, and I joined him. And I didn't have a, any weapons or shield. But I lived. <laughs> right, so, I'm a pacifist. Yeah, I used vials and 
That was before Battle Sprites, but I used vials and uh, pots. I, I used a lot of pot that day. <laughs> yeah, also um, probably a stupid idea. Uh, I think... And smartest thing I've ever done? I don't know. I don't do smart things in Spawn Nights. Smartest um, thing I would have done? It's your turn. <laughs> yeah, smartest thing I would have done is find ways to have movement speed increase low... Damage bonus, ultra attack speed, very high charge time reduction, very high on everything that I own. Uh, swords. And then attack speed's a little lower for guns and bombs. And have the loadout that has that for everything with a combination of armors and helmets and battle sprite perks. <laughs> um, and I could make everything go higher if I had the uh, modules from lockdown or from PvP, but I think it's okay. No amount of charge direction or attack speed is going to actually really affect things at yeah, this point. Yeah, at that point. But Black Cat Cow plus Chaos plus Sprite perk. Oh, man. <laughs> so much fun. Um, Swift Strike. And Swift, yes, and the Swift Strike um, will complete the trifecta, well, the quadfecta of <laughs> movement speed, attack speed, damage bonus, and charge time reduction. Figuring that out was fun. Here's a stupid thing I did. Well, one of them was make the Azure... Cobalt, whatever it is, the Azure Guardian armor, my primary armor on my first <laughs> night, because that seems like a good idea, but that's not really... I mean, people can do that. They can main that, and that's fine. Um, Let's see. Smartest uh, thing I've ever done. Beyond that, though, a stupid thing that I really did was I was going to start a new night. I'm like, uh, I don't really think that this night is where I want it to be, and so I decided I'll just restart from scratch. I think that will be fun. So I was going to delete this night. So what I did was I took all of my materials and I put them up on the auction house. I created a new night, uh, mm -hmm. got into Haven, and then I'm like, okay, on my old night, I'm going to put all of my stuff up on the auction house for, like, buy now one crown. <laughs> and then I'll switch over to my other night real quick and buy it back. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know how that ended, because as soon as I put it up there, like, within two seconds, it all gets bought. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, I should have bailed myself. So yeah, that's stupid. Don't don't do that, kids. Yeah. Don't put up all your five star materials for uh one crown on the auction house. Let's see, smartest thing I ever did, um I found a four star weapon once. I guess that's smart. Nice. It's purely intelligence on my part as well. <laughs> Completely. Um it was a uh Nova driver or something. Oh nice. So. Yeah, the I sold it. Prisma driver. Prisma driver. I think it's the four star. Four. Yeah, it's the four star. I found a Shadow Tech Alchemer in a fused demo suit in boxes before. That's it. Hmm. Yeah, it was in Jelly Palace. Huh. Nice. No wait, no. That one was in Firestorm Citadel. Yeah, I've, the only time I've ever found gears in Firestorm Citadel. But then again, Firestorm Citadel is one of the places with the highest concentration of prized boxes per level mm -hmm. in Spiral Knights. So uh, consistently. All right, well, that's that. And for Zhang, we may have to ask him later, or maybe we'll forget. I don't know. Um, Reaper but... says hi. Oh, does he? Mm -hmm. Is he on right now? He's oh, playing he's, Killing Floor. Yeah, he's playing Killing Floor. Yeah, we he just got Killing Floor, and he's... How many hours has he put into this? I want to see. He's like, Spiral Knights, what's that? I'm playing Killing Floor. How many hours in the last, like, two <laughs> in the days? the last week, yeah. It's like eight hours... The day he got 90, he has, he's owned the game for three days. He's played 20 hours. <laughs> nice. Okay. Good job, Reaper. Keep staying productive. <laughs> and again, I just played Spiral Knights for like three hours into the night last night, so. We spent an hour solving technical difficulties. Hmm. It was a bit. It was all right. It was... It's something I've never heard of before, but anyways. All right, now that we have sword handling tips, the concise edition. <laughs> what is the extended edition look like? <laughs> Goodness. It's like, it's just like reams and reams and reams of paper. It, the Library of Congress is cover for it. Yeah. Well, uh, always, step one, always hold it by the handle and never hold it by a blade when you're attacking an enemy. This is a good point. Your turn. All right, my turn. Um... Uh, Let's see. Stab outwards, not inwards. Unless, of course... Oh, no, I'm not going to say that. That's kind of racist. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's... Please not. Well, I mean, you know, ritualistic suicide by sword. Yeah, or killing yourself for honor 
But yeah. the closest we get to that in Spiral Knights is Fang of Vogging ourselves to death. So Yeah. yeah. Or um Fost Fosting. Yeah, oh, that's true. Just getting cursed and then racing a bomb over your head five million times until you die. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, no. In all what? Is that a sentence? In all seriousness <laughs> though. Always finish what? What? Always finish what? It's it's a writing thing. Sentences? No, you say always finish what? Where? No, it, it, it's, it's in general. Always finish what? I, I don't understand. Never mind that. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm so confused. <laughs> always, always finish what? And you're supposed to say something after what, but you don't. So. Oh. Always finish. Oh, I get it. Okay, it's a state. Oh, I thought you were asking a question. Like, ah, okay, no, oh, such confused. All right. One thing that will be really helpful if you don't know how to do it. This is uh, the. It's not the most complicated things. If you played this game for a while, hopefully you know these already. But we'll go through them anyways. One of them is learn to shield cancel, because mm-hmm. I am. I don't know. Me personally, I'm really surprised. Just watching people play, how many people depend on like their combo. I'm like, do you not An auto shield aim. cancel? Yeah, uh, auto aim too. Auto aim is actually helpful depending on the sword you're using sometimes. Um, but not when you're trying to. Well, I mean, shield cancel. Oh, that's true. Um. But it'll keep you aligned. Yeah, shield cancel is just where you swing and immediately press the shield button, and then press the swing button, and then the shield button, and then press the swing button, and you'll stand in place and swing two or three times depending on your actual sword, and whether it has a two or three hit combo. Too. Yeah, it'll swing slightly faster. You'll stand around in place. If you've got a guy trapped, you don't want to combo into him. You want to uh, shield cancel, and you'll just whoosh, 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 and with whatever sword you've got, um, that's important. For PvE, probably even more important for player versus player, because if you can't shield cancel in player versus player, then you're going to get slain a lot, because you're going to be way open. Uh, Comboing does deal more damage, but it'll throw you out of position, it's slower, it leads to recoil, all that fun stuff. Um, you got to know when to charge and when not to charge, because there are some places where it's good to charge and some places where it's not. Places where it's not good to charge would include most piercing blades, because most piercing blades are bad um, to charge uh, in, in some cases. Particularly, say, the flourish blade in a fiend level, because you don't want to be charging there. Um, <laughs> the flourish charge is a three-swing, stabbing, moving forward, throw you out of position, target one enemy. Yeah, you'll kill that one enemy, but you could have easily just killed him by swinging twice, even shoot canceling swinging twice. Um, yeah, definitely. Knowing when and to, you leave yourself vulnerable. You do leave yourself very vulnerable, and if you do that, you will most likely get things chucked at you. Um, CDs, chairs, people. Right. Uh, the brandishes you understand will administer their status if you charge, but not when you swing normally. So, when you have a combustor and you're up against oilers for whatever reason, like monster boxes, yeah, that's bad. If uh, you've got a trojan and you have a volt edge, don't charge the thing because other people can freeze him. On the mm-hmm. other hand, you do know when to charge, which is if you're fighting a Trojan with, say, a Glacius, then by all means, please charge your sword and freeze that thing. Um, yes, definitely. In the same case, knowing when to combo and when not to combo can also be important, including whether you have auto-target on or off, combos will really mess you up or not mess you up. And really quick, because the question's there, Thirder Wing, do you know guys a good place for elite orbs to farm? Um, depth or stratum five or six four. Ah, uh, one, stratum three, five. seven. <laughs> stratum four. The second half of tier two is the best place to find elite orbs, anywhere. Um, on the whole thing, uh, or sky scythe will cover you too. Yeah, but anywhere in that area. Knowing when to combo and not to combo for the very same reasons as charge. You should learn your sword's range because swords swing with different ranges. And knowing your sword's range will be helpful when you're trying to swing and destroy bomb blocks without blowing yourself up uh, and without missing. Um, Knowing when you can hit enemies, how many enemies you can hit, which enemies are next to each other, all that. The bigger the sword, generally the bigger the range you can hit from farther out. Mm -hmm. The piercing blades have a... Actually, between the piercing blades and the brandishes, I think the brandishes have a shorter range. Um, in my experience, probably with just PvP, but I don't know. 
than the bigger swords like the sealed sword variants and the trikas and that kind of thing. They will swing really far out, and so you can hit guys without them actually being able to reach you, and that's really nice too. Um, for sword handling, generally damage bonus is almost always better than ASI. Um, the bigger the sword, the less this applies, but especially for the smaller swords, if you're in a toss-up between damage bonus and ASI, i.e. Skulver or Vog, Skulver or Vog, Chaos or something else, Chaos or something else, uh, damage bonus is generally better. Even Barbarous Thorn Shield or Swift Strike, Barbarous Thorn Shield or Swift Strike, generally, this is not a always true statement, damage bonus is going to be better than attack speed increase. Uh, and then once again, the bigger the sword, the less this applies. Yeah, you could argue that for really big swords, uh, the Troikas and the Sealed Sword variants, the uh, being the Grand Foss and Divide Avenger, for those, uh, ASI is probably better for you, because you're going to kill in two swings anyways. Mm -hmm. The point of the damage bonus is to reduce the number of times you have to swing, from four swings to three swings, or from three swings to two swings. Um, that's the goal, because that's better than ASI for, for swords. Um, if your damage bonus max is not going to change that number, then by all means, go ASI. And you have to learn how your sword works uh, for whatever enemy you're fighting. I know for Tier 2 I've mastered uh, that. It turns out that no matter how much damage bonus I have, I need about damage bonus medium on my Barbarous Thorn Blade to kill fiends in two swings anywhere in Tier 2. And so I just do that, and then no more, because it's a waste. So, uh, that's... You should experiment with the swords that you like to use and figure out with the enemies that you fight where damage bonus is applicable and where ASI is applicable, but generally damage bonus is better than ASI. Yes. Aside from obvious things like the damage type, most swords are pretty much the same. I mean, there, there'll be things like, you know, speed and stuff, but you can always buff them with things outside of the sword, like, you know, trinkets and stuff and armors and stuff like that. The sword itself doesn't always matter. There's, there's a few pros and cons for different ones, but mm -hmm. like, you know, like poison and fire and mm -hmm. curse and stuff. But aside from that, most swords are, it's pretty much just figuring out how to use them. Well. Mm -hmm. Though, I mean, people will fight about this, but if you're like, if you're going maximum efficiency, maximum damage, kill as quickly as possible. If you're in a toss up between which sword to get, get the one that deals the most damage. Like mm -hmm. get the combustor before the glacius because the combustor deals way more damage. Um, the charge explodes the enemy all the way down where the Glacius doesn't always do that. The fire deals more damage. Um, get the Acheron before you get either of those, because the Acheron does a ton of damage because yeah. it's so strong. Get a Barbara Stormblade or Flourish, not a Rigadoon or Flamberge first, because you kill faster with those, because the other two have reduced damage. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, don't get a Dread Venom Striker right off. It's a fun weapon, but it's a fun weapon later. Um, it's not generally as great when you're starting off. I wouldn't recommend it particularly because it just takes too long to kill things. So yeah, not very strong, but fun. <laughs> but fun, very fun. Uh, speaking of fun, is like getting run over by enemies is not always good. So you gotta know as a sword pursed wielder, you're gonna be in the thick of it. So when you're up against gremlins and slimes and stuff like that, you need to know when to back off. Learn your enemies' attack patterns. Sometimes it's really quick in and out, in and out. Sometimes it's stick around for a while and then back up. Um, with gremlins and like mecha knights, you're going to be in and out, in and out, and if you're trying to avoid damage, shield bumping and or moving is going to be mm -hmm. uh, really important for you. On the other hand, slimes, you can stay in there, fight a little bit longer, and as they're about to attack you, stop swinging and move. Um, the other thing is, a lot of the times you'll get caught. Um, the game is built so that our, our combo swings for swords are just slow enough that they will hit us before we hit them and stun mm -hmm. them. So you can either combat this by A, getting attack speed increase, or B, learning how to shield cancel. Because yeah. if you shield cancel, then you can move. So, hey. Smart. Next level strats, yo. And then lastly, know your environment. Uh, just the kinds of things of if you're trying to get jellies to fuse, you can hit them towards each other. If you're not trying to get them to fuse, don't hit them towards each other. Don't hit enemies towards healers because that's a thing that happens I'm like why are you sword comboing that way you see a guy like whacking on someone with their combustor and they're like pushing him towards the healers don't do that um don't hit outside of bomb or teammate range because charge swings will tend to do that where you knock enemies out of range push them into bombs that's uh your teammates will love you for it uh 
keep your enemies within your teammates range because the other thing I see is there's an enemy in the middle and like two teammates and one teammate starts hitting the enemy away from the other teammate <laughs> and so you're doing half as much damage as you could if you just started both wailing on the same guy that's so much more effective for obvious reasons yeah. so I yeah, don't whack people outside of bomb radiuses yes please don't that's unfair <laughs> or gun raid range isn't for that matter you yeah. just be aware of your environment as a sword you can play the game of hack and slash and just mash buttons um or you can strategize or you can strategize and actually think about what you're doing both are valid strategies strategies now, as we're speaking of swords and all this, our sprint question for this week is which brandish is best and why? And so this is between the Glacius and the Voltage and the Combustor and the Akron and the Obsidian Edge and the Cautery Sword. We've already established the Cautery Sword is best sword. Yes. So um, which brandish do you boast is best? What brandish uh, boasts best bound? Bound? What, what, what brandish boasts the best balance? Oh, hey, nice. All right, so you have... Now, we don't have to say best and worst, but just give a ranking based on your experience and what you've seen um, um, and why you think... I'm not going to include Cautery Sword because that would be unfair to the other swords. <laughs> but um, I like... Uh, I guess Glacius, Acheron, Combustor, Voltage... Now let's actually let's not make this a sprint, sprint question. Let's argue this. Why Glacius? I don't understand this. I think the Glacius is the worst of all of them. It freezes. It's best. Why is that best? <laughs> because it freezes. It freezes best. Generally, when you use the the charge you swing, you can use the... freeze against more things than fire.
transmutations. Alright, welcome to Transmutations. This is where we talk about the things that we want to see added to the game. Except we're not talking about the things we want to see, we're talking about the things Herolia wants to see. Because he sent us some stuff, and so we're rounding out the last of what he sent us. Uh, if you have something that you want to see in the game, we're happy to talk about it. So just email us, mail us, talk to us, call us, let us know. Uh, Herolia says that would like to see barrier bombs. So they would act similar to the Seraphinx's sprite ability, combined with a nitronome. For the knockback and damage. I think this kind of sounds like tier 3 gremlin mender bubble. Where you get the <laughs> shield and it pushes the enemies away from you. And so you just get a little bit of breathing room. Okay, yeah. Uh, I kind of like that. Does it do damage though? Because if not, it would be the most OP thing ever because no one could ever hurt you. You just keep charging and letting setting down this bomb. Like if it happens, should it, it not be... do damage? What if it was a one-time use thing, or like it t took a really long time to recharge to be able to use it again? Break a bubble shield from Halo. Huh. It could be a pickup. Yeah, it could be a pickup. Yeah, I, yeah I'd, I'd see it as a pickup. And it could even just... do things like, uh, sh there could be special ones. There could be the normal, like, standard one to pick up, the basic one. Uh -huh. And it could be, like, a shock one, or if you come in contact with it, it shocks you. Huh. This sounds like a PvP thing. Yeah. More than a PVE thing, almost to me. It could be. It could still be useful in PvP, PVE though. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. But then again, as Clifford says, isn't this just Nitronome? <laughs> because I mean, really, if it's knocking everything back, do you need the shield? Is a yeah. good point. If it if it keeps things at bay for a little while, then. Oh, if it's constant, yeah. But then again, standing in the middle of the arena and spamming Nitronome does. A good just like standing in place and just nitronoming over and over and over again. It also costs mass lag. <laughs> yeah. Pe people playing on other servers are like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> um, there is the. Sorry, I was just thinking, did I tell everyone about the, uh, the perpetual motion machine I found in Spiral Knights during the Torta Drone event? Uh, no, you But didn't. speaking of the source of all lag, I feel like I should share this because I don't think I said it here. Um, but, you know, one of those. Danger rooms, quote unquote, that had the fiends in them had four yeah. explo four of those bomb blocks that released the little blobs of explosives. Um, all there was like four of them right next to each other. So all you had to do was shoot one of them, and the little blobs would jump out and they'd land and they'd explode. It explode like two or three of the other ones standing next to it, uh -huh. which would jump out and their blobs would kind of come out. And meanwhile, the first ones respawning. <laughs> The first one would come back, the other two would explode and, like, break the other ones. And so I invited, like, the three of us, three guild mates, I'm like, I found perpetual motion in Minecraft. Yeah, that was or, cool. in, in Minecraft? Whoa. In Spiral Knights. Spiral Knights. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about blocks and explosives, blocks. I think I think that was. They should make explosive blocks in Minecraft. TNT? Well, ones that explode when you hit them. TNT with wooden button? <laughs> TNT with flint and steel. Anyways... So we were like one of my Once it one of my guild spawned. teammates or guildmates. I can't remember who, but was someone was just like the source of all lag because we were just sitting here watching these four explosives just go on for eternity. Yeah, there's that's one of uh, Tinganzar's plans. He like does things in the clockworks that makes it lag on purpose. <laughs> like he, uh, okay, all gremlins start laying down as many bombs as you can right now. The entire yeah. server is like uh, crashes. Oh, uh, speaking of which, sword handling tips. Places not to charge. Uh, status is against a Torta drone or a Gremlin bomber because <laughs> those two guys, when afflicted with status, um, bombers just start chucking bombs like they have nothing to lose, which they don't. But they they start going spaztastic with the bombs, and the Torta drones it, in, it increases their missile launching. Uh huh. Um, They're like, ooh, we ooh I'm on fire! Fire missiles. <laughs> I'm on fire? Hmm, that reminds me to fire missiles. That reminds me I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heroya suggests jumping, so why not have a jumping ability, not a dash, but it would allow us to jump up in the air to avoid any damage whatsoever. Um, it would be obtained from drops in the clockworks, um, such as <laughs> rocket packs or jump sparks or magic farting juice or whatever, but in essence it would give you the ability to dash without actually moving. 
Uh-huh. So instead of, like, dashing where you, you know, you like, you dash out of the way, except you've just dashed onto some spikes, instead of that, it would just be a dash that stands still. Um, should be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um... I don't, would it replace the dash is my question because there's times when you want to get out of the way and there's times when you want to dodge damage um, if you're fighting a Trojan you want the dash not the jump but if you yeah. are say I, I don't know or maybe the jump would get away from that I don't, I don't know huh. it would be interesting I don't know what the difference Check between jumping and dashing would be other than that it would prevent you from dashing into spike blocks or spikes or something like that yeah Although you don't want to be able to jump too far. Yeah. I mean, it's like... <sighs> you just, like, launch into the air and, like... I don't know. Jump over walls. Yeah. Game Masters can do that. Yep. So. I don't know. I'm I'm less sure about that one, but I, I, I don't know. I still think jumping should be possible. Ever since I was in a fiend level, and there was my spawn, and right next to me, literally was the elevator, just on my screen. <laughs> but there was just this little strip of, like, road, like, separating the two. And the level went, like, horseshoe. It went all the way around yeah, and came this. back. I'm like, can I jump? <laughs> just Please? take a running jump and jump <laughs> over it, yeah. Yeah, it was silly. But, yeah. And then Green Link is saying, hardcore parkour in SK? All the yes. So, there's that. And the last thing that Hiroya says, I like this one a lot, is guild battles. Yeah. I, so why not have a game mode where you can have a full out battles in your guild hall? Because that would guild be halls, awesome. Yeah. Um, and he <laughs> specifies everyone uses proto, and then there's turrets that you can use too um, yeah, guild, to set up in strategic places. It was, it would make sense to have guild auto defenses. Like whatever the home guild is, they would have turrets set up like on their walls and stuff uh-huh. that would shoot non guild members. Uh huh. So, the other thing is he says all proto. I mean, I guess that makes sense to equalize everything. But, I mean, if there's no lockdown classes, then isn't it kind of just... I think just whatever you're wearing would be fine. It would be, would be fine. I mean, you, the Guildmaster could just turn it off if they wanted to. Oh, that's true. Make it a toggle switch. I feel like if you were going to raid someone else's guild, though, you just want to go six people with bombs or something. Mm-hmm. Or... Yeah. It, and... Then you just you walk into a guild hall, like... Someone that a guild that's really active, like, and then you walk, you walk in there with five people with bombs, and there's like sixty people in the guild hall. <laughs> and they're like, oh. Well, if a guild hall can support sixty people, right, and we've seen it can from different events, yeah. Then surely it can fit thirty plus thirty. Yeah. But could it fit thirty could it hit- plus thirty all swinging weapons at each other? Yeah, I don't know. Or I mean, it can. Hit- Havens can handle a lot of people and their sprites mm-hmm. and NPCs, so and, and um, snipes. So I mean, the servers could handle it, but they would have to reconfigure a lot of stuff. Yeah, I want this. But stuff. there was the precedent set when they introduced Margrel because oh, for fighting in rest in, areas. In rest yeah. areas, yeah. This is a good point. Now, I was thinking about this. I'm like, there is a way to modify this for within your guild having a battle where mm-hmm. you just set down infinite buckets of snowballs or just use snowballs from the inventory and just mm-hmm. basically have full guild dodgeball where you just, by honor system, if you get hit with a snowball, you go to a designated area, you're out, last man standing wins. Yeah. And so within your guild, that's a practical way to do it now. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, it's a practical way to do that now where you just use snowballs and you play dodgeball in your guild hall. That would be fun. Also, he says, guild halls are much, much, much larger, Heroia says. But, anyways. Ha! Guild battles. Uh, outside of guild versus guild, obviously. Because yeah. that's not enough. We need more ways to kill more our friends and enemies. Kill. Yeah, <laughs> more ways to kill rival guilds. Speaking I can just of... imagine Echo of Silence invading some, some guild and wiping everyone out. Yep. Speaking the guildmaster of... frantically, like, toggles it off. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off! Seal, seal the gates! <laughs> It's like a little animation of like the gate drops down or comes up, I guess, because that's how it works in Spiral Knights. And then, yeah. Um, and while we're just talking about that, real quick, uh, guild battles and that kind of thing, I'm going to uh, keep uh, signal boosting this idea because I'm working on it, and I've got a couple of people that have said that they're interested in doing this. Um, we talked about uh, last podcast or a few podcasts ago about mm-hmm. what happens if you made the I- like a proof of concept lockdown team. Of a striker, a recon, and a guardian, 
and a striker, a recon, and a guardian. And those groups of three traveled in groups where the guardian was bombing, the recon was death marking, uh-huh. and the striker was dealing the DPS. And you just go around capping points, because that's all it takes to win. Like, how effective would that be? Because it sounds really, really incredibly effective. Um, it would be... Yeah, I've seen similar th- similar tactics used. In- I mean, but no one's, like, actually... I've never seen it before, ever, in, G- in like, Guild versus Guild. I've seen people go, like, all bomber team, and that's silly. Yeah. But, like, all haze bomb, and you win a bunch of games that way. But, like, having a... a th- two teams of three, and you just have coordination between these, these teams, is something that we want to see happen. We have an empty guild called the Skylark Elite, or the Sklay Elite, um, mm-hmm. that is one of our alt- alts is just holding. And we'd be interested in getting six people and trying this yeah. as a proof of concept. Um, we have... I'm a Guardian, so I could do the bombing. We have a recon in the form of Blue Flood. Um, you can check out... He's crazy awesome at recon. He's got some really great strategies for... Uh, Reconning, he's youtube.com slash Damon, D-A-M-O-N, 180. Um, so you should check it. He's the guy who will go Hail Driver plus Fang of Og and just go around. He'll shoot the Hail Driver and just keep poking you until he freezes you. Then he'll go into his Recon Cloak and stand next to you until you death mark. Then he'll just hit you with the Fang of Fog and like, you're dead. Huh. And he just goes around doing this and just gets tons of damage. I'm like, wow. I'm usually Recon or Striker. All right, well, that will be it for the random ideas of this show. Again, if you have something that you want to see in the game, a weapon, a status, a monster, whatever, send it to us. We'll be probably happy to talk about it, depending on how in-depth you go. To be honest, if you go super in-depth, crazy with an idea, we're a little uh, incentivized to not talk about it, <laughs> because it's you've gone completely berserk on an idea on a imagination rather than actual thing in the game. Uh-huh. But, I mean, things like Snakes S17, he said, movement speed increase if you get lit on fire, because that makes sense. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm on fire! <laughs> That's fun to talk about. So. Around, yeah. mm-hmm. There you go. Moving on. Spiral Order Recon. I got it! And of course, in the chat, Green Link says, "And this idea will double the content of the game." Want to talk about it? <laughs> no. But HRBB is just arrived in the chat room. We do live stream these episodes, um, so you can hear the recording live and interact with us hosts. Um, we record at 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, Eastern Standard Time, which currently is GMT minus four because daylight savings times is a poo. <laughs> and that's on Sundays at livestream.com/slash The Arsenal Podcast. So. Fun stuff. HRB is just in time to hear us talk about Hey Soul Blitz Needle, which is a music video he made, and it's kind of awesome. Uh huh. Um, he's actually he's got he's pumping out a few different parodies, and uh, I will say this publicly, but there is this uh, page called on Bandcamp called Downward Spiral SK dot Bandcamp dot com, and mm-hmm. it is where some of us. Uh, I'm the only one who has it before. I talked to Link Boy about it, who's a music composer. He was going to post some stuff up, but he never got the chance to. Um, and he's kind of done with SK now, it seems. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But um, we're putting our music up there, so our parodies and stuff. So if HRVB, if you want to put up your songs on Downward Spiral SK, you should. Please do. Anyways, yeah, this is a music video for Hey Soul Blitzneedle, and it's a uh, parody of Hey Soul Sister about the Blitzneedle and a bunch of other things. It's about as confusing as the original song is. So, <laughs> like, as far as making no sense... And yet it's completely Spiral Knights themed. It's got Zang and Chalk 3 playing, like, drums and guitar. Um, Zang is guitaring on Betty. <laughs> um, I, I wish it... I honestly wish that it was an actual music video, because I feel like that would be really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it actually told some story, because Hey Soul Sister, like, the, the music for it is just so, like, good for stuff like that. But, yeah. Uh, it is what it is. We have... Kiana Shi's Chibi Sky Scythe, which is a art piece. It's just a drawing that he wanted to feature, so there you go. It's just straight up a, uh, a drawing of Sky Scythe in, I think, his new costume, because he's shooting for a costume with a net worth of about 10 million crowns or so. <laughs> he's like, we are talking about it last night. Well, I, I won't say it in case he doesn't want it. It is so expensive. The Park Moon Wings. 
<laughs> yes, it had Apocrine wings. My, one, one of my guild officers has Apocrine wings. They're so awesome. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, how many promo items? I, from Iron like... Dragon wings. Only 10 created ever. <laughs> yeah. Our next one is Chalk 3's Spiral Score Episode 1. If you've been keeping up with Chalk 3 or gameplay flicks on YouTube, um, you should know about this. The Spiral Score is a game show about Spiral Knight's trivia. And, um, yeah, the first episode came out. I was supposed to be on it, and I kept dodging him. I'm like, it's my sister's birthday, and I was out of the house. It's like all these things. I feel really, really bad. I'm like, I'm pretty, he was like, I told him, hey, I'm there whenever you need me, and I dodged him like three times. But he finally got the first episode out, so that's fun. You can go watch it. I haven't actually seen this yet, but it's about 20 minutes long about Sparana's trivia. He's got guests on there. I believe it's Maroka, HRPB, and Diamond Slayer, so... Uh -huh. Asking them trivia questions about uh, Spiral Score and winning actual in-game Spiral Knights uh, monies and stuff like that. And he's asking for content, so if you want to be a guest on that thing, there are certain requirements that you need. If you want to submit questions, there's a certain form you need to fill out. Um, all those things are actually on his channel where you can watch the videos to find out how to do that. That's youtube.com slash gameplayflix. And the link to the Spiral Score episode 1, plus all the rest of these things will be on the show notes for this website at skalaelite.com slash arsenal. Good. We have Blazing Cobalt's Consume Art. Um, kind of put this in here just because Swarm <laughs> um, is a thing. Have you seen this? No. Or are you I looking haven't. at this? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's like, hey, Swarm, Swarm. you are not safe. Let's see what it says. You're not, You're safe. not safe. You... Ooh, I can't read this. Something... Be consumed, we shall become one. Fear thy swarm. Um. Anyways, yeah, it's just, like, swarminess. It's not actually, like, the most in-depth picture or anything. It's just, hey, it's the swarm, so we need to do that. <laughs> need to put that in there, because swarm. Last one is Fighting Polygon's Knights of the Rose, which is, I believe, a colored pencil drawing? But it's really nice. It's contrasting... Yeah, this looks like colored pencils. I'm pretty... Does it say? I think so. Huh. Anyways, um, it's got uh, two knights, one with the... I guess it's the green rose regalia, and then one with the scarlet one. And then they're brandishing their... No pun intended, but they're brandishing their flourish and <laughs> flamberge to, to match the color scheme of the rose regalia. Yeah, they're uh, not flourishing their brandish, though. <laughs> they're not flourishing their brandish. They're brandishing their flourishes. So, it just looks really nice. I like the color contrast on that. It's, it's uh, fun stuff. And that's that. So, once again, all the art is on the website. You go check it out. And the videos. Um, so, that's some fun stuff. I want to, after, as soon as this is done, I'm going to watch Chalk 3 Spiral Score Episode 1. Because I want to see what that's all about. Fun stuff. Buzzar. Banter. All right, this will be pretty quick. Our bizarre banter is where we just talk about one line of gear. We finished the gear a long time ago. We're on costumes now. We're just talking about obsidian, the obsidian costumes. They're so, awesome. They're, they're great. awesome. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I think the uh, the the obsidian ritual ones are probably my favorite. Uh, they're all pretty similar, aren't they? They're like slightly different shades of yeah, black. Yeah, they're different shades of black plus red, black plus blue, black plus purple. Green. Uh, black green. plus green. Um, the Obsidian Ritual, Obsidian Influence, Obsidian Sight, Obsidian Devotion, and then there's a both a hood and a mantle uh, mantle for them both. Oh man, I mean we're t we were talking last week about like how the uh, what is it the Equinox gear doesn't quite look like it fits Spiral Knights. It's like whoa, that's a little different. Uh -huh. This this stuff was a little different too. It's like whoa, this is really nice. This is like the nicest armor costume. It's like you're a satanic priest or something. It is Which... like you you like hug someone and they're impaled in like seven different places because you got all the pokey edges sticking out of your thing. And yet it's so cool. If I can get a uh, violet chapeau, by the way, a uh, one of the rose regalia um, chapeaus, then my costume is actually going to officially change. And I'm going to get rid of the polar stuff that Zhang so despises because I'm going uh, that plus uh, some accessories, which I already own, and one of these obsidian costumes. So that's going to be my new costume if ever I can get to it, because I really like this stuff. Oh man, it's so cool. This came out during the Apocryon promotion, and will be most likely back next year's Apocryon promotion. This happened in concurrence with the Halloween event, so in October, 
Um, same as the Pumpkin King Trick or Treat. And Frosty. Thank you, Sky Scythe. I said Polar. I meant Frosty. <laughs> <sighs> it's a tired show. Speaking of Polar, next week we're going to be talking about Polar. So that'll be... Um, yes, next week. The next week's one. Do you you don't have any of the obsidian stuff, I assume? No, I don't. Um, not any of the weapons either. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. It's all right. I was just curious. Sometimes I, I dream. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I dream that I. Yeah, the the man the hoods aren't as cool in my opinion. To be honest, I don't know. They kind of look like a turkey. They have the, what? They have the saggy. Oh yeah, it, it's a it's a giant it's like really poofy hood with like three eyes it's something it's you sh- saggy we were talking i was talking to lord hood i'm like he should have a collection of like hoods in this yeah i'm gonna get own- every single hood in the game yeah you should you should own every single hood in the game which will include these obsidian hoods though so that'll be yeah. a little hard to get but eventually you should do it you should try and get every hood or at least have a massive collection of them anyways polar is next week so we'll be talking about that that's obsidian once again, it was a promotion only. Uh, you get it through Apocryan boxes, which you purchased with Energy, I believe. Mm-hmm. So they, sh- they show up on the auction house every now and then. Yeah, from vendors who are selling them. Yeah. Um, they were as cheap as about 100k. Um, as the lowest I got them, I saw them. And now they will vary between 100 to 1,000k, <laughs> i.e. 1 million. So, huh. Oh. Sky Scythe says, I have a guild mate with multiple of every hood, Lord Hood. <laughs> Such cheats. Or what did he say? He says he has a guild mate with multiple of every hood. Hmm. So, well, he probably has every armor and every... He probably has every everything. Every everything. With with every every variant on every everything. <laughs> yeah. Thousands of pieces of armor. We did actually talk about all this Apocryphon stuff, and we fawned over it a little bit more, both on YouTube. Um, there was the a Spiral Knights Impractical special episode for Dark Harvest. Um, mm-hmm. You can look that up on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Elite, and also um, on the podcast. So if you go back to October's episode, you can hear us talk about that. It was fun. So there you go. That's the Bizarre Banter. Okay. I'll say it one more time because the key to learning is repetition. But next week is Polar Armors. Uh, if you want to tell us something about Polar that's like, oh man, I really need to tell them about it, tell us. We'd love to hear it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your unique variants. Unique Variants is where we're just going to wrap up the show. We would talk about listener contributions. Uh, if you called us at one six seven eight three two two seven seven six five as our phone number, um, we would play your call here and answer whatever questions or make comments on your comments or anything like that. But you didn't do that. If you emailed us at arsenal.squilly.com with a comment or an audio file or something like that, we would talk about that. But there's nothing. If you said something interesting on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Elite, or on Facebook or Twitter, or even on our website or the Steam community, we would talk about that here. But there is nothing, so that's okay. Um, so that's gonna just basically end episode 72 right here. I will shout out once more to mainly Sky Scythe, because the rich butt has <laughs> a lot of money and great ambitions for his costume. And he's also really helpful when it comes to Spiral Knight's shopping list. I think after two seasons, he's ready to retire. Uh, so he may not be coming back. But thanks for the service that you have done for us for shopping list. Uh, as well as Glacies, Zangrius, uh, Maroka Cognitive, Sir Green Link, Solitron slash Sir Jinxable, uh, Roderick, and Madam Tigger. All the players that played um, in the Spiral Knight shopping list. Mm-hmm. There you go. Shout out to Zangrius, who did message me halfway through this podcast and said that he is headed back up to school, so that's why he's not here. Hopefully he will return next week, as will we. You can tell a friend about us if you like listening to the podcast, because that's how we gain listeners and things like that. <laughs> I looked, our first episode almost has 100 straight downloads off our website, hmm. but people listen a lot of other ways, too. It's about 100 people that'll listen through YouTube, 300 or so that'll listen through iTunes. It's like, wow, such hmm. influence much obsidian very ritual site and devotion okay <laughs> I don't know where that came from other than obsidian ritual influence site and devotion being the armor that we just talked about okay 
If you want to email us, you can do so at arsenal at sclaley.com. All the other contact information I cleverly snuck into the outro here. And uh, if you want to see all the links to this episode, you can do so at sclaelite.com slash arsenal. That's us done for the week. If you see us in game, say hi. Lord Dashhood and Lazen Dash Clay and Zangrius. Um, yeah. yeah. Such tired podcast. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Cheeky. and ready to go. Thanks for listening to the Arsenal of Spiral Knights podcast. See links and listen to previous episodes on our website, scalaley.com slash arsenal. Send comments, questions, and audio to arsenal at scalaley.com or give us a call at 1-678-322-7765.